All right, here we go, guys. The map is Entombed Valley, and here we have our purple Zerg player from the team with the creepy Grim Reaper icon for its mascot. It is Vortex, trying to be the Grim Reaper of this team here. Their yellow Protoss representing them all the way from Korea. It is Vines. What if I hear the beginning of that Protoss music there? I, I just always... I always think I'm underwater. I don't know. Oh. It just it sounds right. like Zelda water temple music or something like that. Oh, so, but do yeah. you get lost and like have to spend hours there trying to figure things out? Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> I have I have Ocarina of Time sitting on my 3DS right now and I I'm oh, actually dude, right too. next to the uh, to the water temple. I'm so. actually I'm playing that game a little bit. I'm not that far into it yet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I love my 3DS, man. Although I'm playing Ghost Trick right now. Oh, which I don't know if you've heard about that. It's kind of a puzzle game. I think you told me about it the other yeah, day. Yeah, you're like so. trying to solve your mm -hmm. own murder. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that, that's actually a really intriguing game. So. Yeah. Well, for now, Vortex, we've seen how he handles Terran players. Very, very, very good Terran players, I might add. Um, and he's done it pretty effectively. But the map is in Tomb Valley. No real surprise there. Out of Vines. And uh, yep. we're going to see what sort of uh, plan he's going to execute here. We, we've seen either the very aggressive two-base play, trying to really isolate and uh, and kill a Zerg's third very early on. We've also seen the flip side of things, where it's very easy for a Protoss player to wall off the front, wall off the side, and take a quick third. Yeah, you've got a lot of options as a Protoss player, and basically all of them are good. So we'll have to see what Vines decides to do. Vortex probably going to go for that three hatch no gas build like nearly every Zerg does go for these days. It, it's kind of the standard. And even on a map like this where your third base is a little bit separated from your natural, it's still fairly safe to do something like that. Oh, the drone getting a little bit. Oh, oh he's trying to harass the probe. He wants to take that base and he does. Oh, nice. He does not manage to knock the probe out of the way for just a moment. Gets that second base down very quickly. And now Vortex. Is he going to try to... All right, yeah, he's got an opportunity here where he can send that drone over to the third base, but it's always good to leave them near the natural. You want to watch out for pylons and things. Every once in a while, you do have to deal with cannons as a Zerg player in this situation, so better safe than sorry. And uh, Fines actually did decide to put down a 17 Forge, so right yeah. at the end, and 17 Nexus afterwards, so... Uh, actually, 18 Nexus, I apologize. Um, with that Photon Cannon and Second Pylon coming up, he'll have a very nice wall pretty early on here. Overlord's going to get a pretty good look at his opponent's base, but we'll have to back out in just a bit. Looks like he finds yep. where he is and decides to move away for now. Going to kind of go around the side so we can check on those gases in a couple of minutes. And that's exactly what you want to do. I mean, the first thing you want to do with your Overlord is send him right up the middle like that on Entombed Valley. Make sure that they are indeed Forge expanding. And then if they are, then you just send them around to the outside so you can keep an eye on the gases at the natural. That's kind of the general first Overlord scout path that you want to focus on in this third base going down now for Vortex. Yep, that's right. So three base, no gas. No yep. real surprise. Now, I've noticed Vortex, um, you know, the, you mentioned that there's a strong European Zerg style right now. Vortex doesn't really subscribe to it. It seems like he's always up on the Korean metagame and is always doing what they're doing. So I'm not too surprised to, uh, I would not be too surprised to see his build kind of mirror what Koreans are doing in uh, CVP at the moment. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. When it comes to Zerg versus Protoss, the styles are actually very similar worldwide right now. Yeah, they are. Um, ZVP has kind of become a matchup that is, uh, quote-unquote, very figured out right now. Zergs have kind of figured out the optimal optimal way to open against Protoss, who have kind of figured out the optimal way to open against Zergs. So as far as that goes, it's really kind of a matter of changing up the follow-ups to those openings. It's kind of deciding the games. And while that's still kind of, to a certain extent, being figured out, a lot of it, you know, is kind of standardized now. You know, you see a lot of early roaches from Zerg, you see a lot of early gateway pressure from Protoss, and it's not always that way, but worldwide it usually is. Plus one attacks coming up for Fines very early on, and we'll see what he wants to hit after this. Um, that is the opening for quite a few uh, aggressive builds if he wants to go down that route, and yeah. uh, the question will be, does he take his third and fourth gas right now, or does he bypass that for a while? Yep, and uh, where is the Overlord? Okay, there it is. It is in position to come in and watch, and yep, exactly the time. Usually between the six and seven minute marks, you want to check for that. This may be a little bit early of a scout. Don't know how much he's really going to see out of this one. Um, but well, he does have an Overlord on the other side as well. That would be about right, though. It finds we're going to go for some sort of a Stargate opening or uh, some sort of a quick Robo opening. Yeah. So uh, that actually does tell him quite a bit. So oh, gas number go. three coming down right afterwards, but not number four. Vortex does see number three there. Uh, but as we know, a third base is already on the way for Vines. Yeah, really quick third base. Third base off of just one gateway, actually. Extremely yep. aggressive expanding here. 
Now, uh, the question is, will Vortex try to do anything to punish this? Vines trying to do everything he can to stay safe. Look at that, a cannon and three gateways making that wall off. Really, really, really playing passive. This is like the PVZ version of the Creator Prime style almost. And uh, I know we haven't looked at Vortex in a while, but he's doing everything really, really normally. I mean, oh, yeah. he's sitting on uh, 49 drones at the moment. He's got his Evolution Chamber, Roach Warren, Layer Tech, and Fourth Gas coming up. So everything is as about standard as it could be for him. So yeah. nothing too out of the ordinary. The question will be, of course, does he want to uh, commit to Infestors pretty early on and stay a little bit more defensive on Roaches? Or will he try to max very quickly? Now, once he gets a read on this next base, that could make up his mind for him. You know, even with the Wallen, he may be pretty tempted to try to go for some sort of big attack at the natural. He's droned up to about as much as he needs to right now with that round of drones that's coming up right now. He's going to be at around 70. Probably needs a few more, but once you hit around 70 on three bases, you can start making units. Yeah, the first couple roaches coming out at the moment. And if he's able to attack that natural, kill off the cyber core, stop more stalkers from being brought in, he could end up doing okay, doing some decent damage against his opponent. So he's got this window, I feel, because the gateways and things are going to be up a little bit later for Vines. Um, I don't know if he's going to want to really take advantage of it, though. It, it still does involve going up ramps. Oh, it's going to be drop play, though. Yeah. Very cool. Pneumatized Carapace yeah. and Ventral Sacks coming up along with Roach Speed, Zerg. So he has three kinds of speeds coming up right now. Overlord, Roach, and Zergling. So. Why not? Um, but as we can see out of Vines, he's sitting on just four gates at the moment, researching Hallucination, going up to his uh, Twilight Council as well. And uh, I'll be really curious to see where his tech direction goes from here on out. I've never seen anyone with this particular uh, variety of this oh, three man. base build. Wow, uh, Vines actually planning on playing really passively this game, even going so far as to get Hallucinate. He's just going to sit on three bases for a very long time. He's got 2-2 two -two on the way, and I mean, Realistically speaking, he could just sit there until he's maxed out with 3-3 and then move out. So, yeah, this is kind of funny here. Uh, I don't. The thing is, though, Vortex, I believe, is really responding well. I mean, he's going for that Roach play. He's got upgrades of his own coming. So if Vines continues to play very passively, doesn't put a lot of uh, focus into making a lot of units, he could be in a little bit of trouble from this drop play. This actually works really well. This is probably the best option Vortex has against what Vines is doing. Well, Vines has a few more gateways just about to finish up, and he's going to need some units in a hurry. This is almost like uh, you know, we see players like Creator Prime doing this, the, the emphasis on upgrades in PvT, yeah. but in PvZ, you really never see 2-2 at this stage of the game. But if he doesn't have the units to take advantage of, then it just doesn't matter. A blink on the way right now. That's not going to help him against this. He's going to really have to rely on some good force fields within his base. But no matter what he does, I think Vortex is going to be able to do some decent damage, and he's going to pull the units over to the third first, it looks like. Wow, this is going to be a total of 12 gates here in a second, yeah. but Vines has not been able to take advantage of it quite yet. Oh, and the first two the units are coming in now for Vortex. And is he going to drop in the natural? Looks like he is not going into the main. He wants to take out this base first, and now Vines kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. He needs to split his army up perfectly. Yeah, and unfortunately, a couple of the warp gates are going to go down off to the side, and uh, Vines doesn't have a ton of economy right now because he's pulled off of two bases oh, at the wow. moment, so he's not going to be able to take advantage of all these, and he's already down by 80 supply. Yeah, you know, believe it or not, I was actually talking to Axlev about this exact thing happening in PvZ, and yeah, if you play that really passive style, you do become vulnerable to these drop strategies, and Vortex has done some okay damage. He's killed a couple gateways. He killed the Nexus at the natural. Oh, wow. He's got units streaming in right now. Vines in serious trouble. Yes, he is. And he's trying to warp in as many units. You do see the power of 2-2 here because he's oh, able yeah, to very sure. cost-effectively trade with these units, but he just doesn't have enough. Yeah, even more units streaming across the map right now. Nearly 100 supply ahead, 76 to 141. The sentry is getting taken out. Only a couple stalkers left over. Some probes having to fight as well. 15 more roaches on the way. 28 workers killed so far by Vortex. Yeah. Things I, just looking great for our Zerk player. 50 supply now, and Vines is in a really tough spot. Yeah, I mean, he lost his Nexus at the natural. That's going to really hurt. He's down to uh, down to nothing. GG. So that is. is it. Vortex takes the lead for Caronte. Oh, my God. He wow. kills the, the Korean Protoss player for...